in our policies regarding security for our organization, one of them should include the life cycle approach and realize that the end is coming. <laughs> I'm not talking about doomsday. I'm talking about the end of life for a product or a service or an application. Because what happens is that sometimes we'll have a device or system in our infrastructure. And at end of life, when the vendor, which is when the vendor says, you know what, we're no longer going to support this. What happens if one week later or two weeks later, there's a vulnerability found? Is that vendor going to provide a patch? The key is that normally, uh, whether it's an operating system or a physical com a device or appliance or something, the vendor will announce the end of life maybe years or months before it actually is end of life and give vendor or give the customer a chance to prepare for that. So if we know that uh, a server or a router or a switch or something else, a piece of software even, is going to be end of life at a certain time, we can then prepare for phasing that out and phasing in something new that can be supported. So for this discussion, let's use this topology and let's imagine this is the headquarters site. And at this device right here, let's go ahead and pick, uh, yeah, let's pick these switches. Let's imagine these switches we've had for a while and they are, in this case, they're 3560s, which is a really old switch. I picked one because I wanted to talk about end of life. Um, at some point, Cisco, the vendor, and it could be a Juniper switch, it could be HP switch, it's all very similar. If the switch is no longer going to be manufactured, there's going to be an EOL, end of life. And they'll notify, you know, on their website saying, okay, end of life is, you know, the 1st of January 2029. <laughs> Actually, these were end of life a while back. We'll look at the actual web page here in a second. And the end of life simply says they're no longer selling them. So end of life represents the fact that if you want to buy a new one, you can't do it after the end of life date. There's also something called the EOSL, the end of service life. And the end of service is the date that no longer will that switch be supported. So maybe we have a support contract for our switches. And even though we have some, maybe the end of service life is January 1st, 2030, one year later. And the reason that EOL and EOSL, the reason those are are negative for security purposes is because if we have gear that's end of service life, the vendor is not supporting that product anymore. And so if there's a brand new vulnerability that's discovered for that device and it's end of service life, we no longer really have a remedy for it as far as the, you know, the operating system or the BIOS on that device because it's no longer supported by the vendor. And that's why if we saw the end of life and end of service life coming up, we'd want to prepare for that. A similar example, it's like having an iPhone so it seems like iPhones, they come out uh, frequently. And so if you have an iPhone 8, and then there's the iPhone 10, and then there's the iPhone 11, I think the iPhone 12, maybe there's the iPhone like 29 eventually, or whatever the number is going to be. The older phones still, depending on how long they support them and what, you know, what year it's in, they're still going to have support for some of the older phones. So you can still possibly go to the vendor and get support for an iPhone 8. But at some point, there's going to be an iPhone that is no longer supported by the vendor. The same thing goes for Samsung or Android or what have you. But the key here is the end of life is the point at which you can no longer purchase that device. And the end of service life is the end of when you can actually get support or updates or maintenance regarding that device. So here on the Cisco webpage regarding the 3560, now, like, I don't know, long, long time ago, this was like the cat's meow switch. In fact, <laughs> uh, one of the benefits of being end of life for individuals who want to buy slight or older gear and get it really, really cheap is that once gear goes to end of life and if it goes end of support, end of service, companies are eager to get rid of this stuff. And as a result, for the person who wants to tinker or play or study, if they don't mind using slightly or, you know, older hardware, they can get it for dirt cheap because companies are getting rid of it and they're going to something newer that is currently supported or will be supported going forward. Case in point, look right behind me. Let me get out of the way there. See right, uh, right there. I've got five little 3560 switches. They don't have fans. They have a heat, big old heat sink on the back, so they don't make a lot of noise, and they're, they're perfect. So I've got four rack, you know, four rack mounted servers back there. They do a lot of emulation with VMware and EVNG and GNS3 and so forth. And then these bad boys, if I ever need physical gear, they were cheap. I mean, dirt cheap, <laughs> and they're all fully functional. And so the reason they were so cheap is because they're simply end of life and end of supports coming up. We'll take a look at that here in a moment. And as a result, the companies that used to have these have gotten rid of them and replaced them with newer gear.
So for the Catalyst 3560 Switch, this is the little baby bear that I've got right behind me. Five of those bad boys lined up. Here it has the status end of life. And so we click on that link, which we will in a moment. It can give us details on it. And it has end of sale date is May 14th, 2016. As I'm recording this, it is 2021 in March. <laughs> and the end of support date is May 31st, 2021. So even though these have stopped being sold since 2016, they were still supported, it looks like, for like five more years. So even as cheap as these are right now on eBay or wherever you want to find used gear, after this date, they're going to be probably even more affordable. And you know what? Just for fun, let's, let's do a really quick search on eBay and see what this 8-port switch runs. All right. So I just did a search for a Cisco 3560, and I said search and show me the results sorted based on price and shipping, lowest to highest. And let's take a look here. Look at this. Here we go. And now we're talking. Here's here's a 3560 24-port switch with power over Ethernet, meaning you can actually power an Internet of Things device or a phone based on the ports for $16 plus $15.09 shipping. So about $30, $31, $32. You could own this. Oh my gosh, they're just so cheap. And this used to be like the cat's meow. And and these switches have all the features they had when they were when they were born, <laughs> when they were first new. Things like they can do multi-layer switching, layer two and layer three. They can do things like port security, uh, DHCP snooping. I mean, they're fantastic. It's just that they're end of life and that's why they're just so darn cheap. So going back to their webpage from Cisco regarding this model, the 3560, uh, if we click on these links, it'll give us more details on how it's over for those devices as far as end of sale, end of life, and end of support. And so here's the takeaway as I hold up yet another discontinued switch. This is a 3750 brand new. This is like three or four thousand dollars. And I think I got this for like seventy five dollars <laughs> and it's fantastic. Anyway, the, the key takeaway from a security perspective is that if it's end of life or end of support, you're not going to be able to get service and support on it, which could involve or introduce vulnerabilities if vulnerabilities are discovered on that platform. And the vendor is not going to provide an update or a fix because it's past its service life. All right. Thanks for joining me in this video, and I'll see you, my friend, in the next one. Until then, I hope this has been informative for you, and I'd like to thank you for viewing.